Hey, my name is Chad. On this channel, we like to make stuff, and uh, we're going to get back to the channel's roots here with uh, where we're actually going to make something. Uh, in the past year and a half or more, we've been working on our property out there at Shady Acres. Uh, so you're probably used to this channel being all about the recovery of this abandoned property. But today, we're going to uh, get into a bit of a somber note where we are going to build this pet urn right here for this cat that uh, recently passed away at 20 years old. Very long life for a cat. So uh, this, uh, this pet was very special to the owner and they wanted to memorialize this cat in a very special way. And they contacted me to build them an urn. So we are making this urn out of a solid piece of walnut with a laser engraved face that uh, uh, is a copy of a photo that uh, uh, I'm gonna show off right now. I was asked to make an urn for a pet, so I got this block of walnut that I cut the side, I cut in half. Then I went to the computer and I designed a box into uh, be carved out of these two blocks of wood. And, uh, I'll just take you through some of the process as I go through it. So here's the first step, I'm cutting out the, uh, the perimeter of one and a half the box. I'll be back for the next step. All right, so in that last process where it drilled the four holes, that's where we're going to uh, either stick alignment dowels or we'll actually use um, uh, some machine screws to, to um, bring the box together and uh, finally close it up. Um, so that is uh, the one half of the box machined. 
Uh, I've got the other one already set up on here. Incidentally, both of these uh, halves of the box are glued, super glued onto this, um, this, uh, this waste board and they're screwed to the spoil board of the CNC machine. So uh, when this one's done, we'll have to knock these off, uh, break the glue bond and clean up the, the top and the bottom halves of the uh, uh, top and the bottom faces of the box. So uh, now that whole process took me an hour and 25 minutes. Uh, I've got this one all set up and ready to go. I just need to set up the, um, the home position off of this corner here uh, so the machine knows where it's working and uh, I'm gonna run that and uh, we'll come back after that and uh, start the next steps to getting these cleaned up and uh, closer to being done all right here it is got uh, both halves exactly the same and they're going to uh, be coming off the board here right about now um, again they're super glued to this piece right here I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little hammer and see if I can just knock it loose. See how that works. Um, hey, here's a rubber mallet. Perfect. So. I don't know, it's, it's on there with super glue pretty good. This extra stuff here is gonna get uh, trimmed off and, and trimmed down with the router. But, uh, yeah, I see you need to clean up the faces here where the glue was. Okay, I'm here at the bandsaw now where I'm going to trim the um, that, that uh, piece of sticking out right there. I only have a piece of sticking out right there because my bit wasn't long enough to go all the way through. So I'm gonna trim that down uh, close to the contour uh, with the bandsaw right here and uh, finish up the uh, uh, with the trim router. I'm gonna get a get it exactly to the contour with the with the uh, uh, template bearing router bit. So I'll show you how that works. Trimmer. <laughs> All right, we're gonna use a trim router next with a different bit. Um, but before I use a trim router, I actually wanna get this face cleaned up. So we're gonna sand on it for a minute and uh, get all this glue and uh, glued on uh, wood off of there. So I have a nice flat surface. There, just like so. So now we're gonna be using the flush trim router bit. It's got a bearing on the end. This is going to go in the uh, trim router, which is here, but this is how it works. So right here is the part I'm going to be uh, trimming off, 
but I want the bearing to follow this contour. So what I'm gonna do, how it works is, it's gonna roll right along this contour and cut everything above that bearing that's sticking out. And go around both sides on both pieces. I got it clamped down right now, uh, so it should work pretty well. And so here we have it all trimmed up. Um, you can see a lot of different tooling marks going on. It looks like it's uh, made of several pieces of wood because of the different directions the tool was cutting it. So we're gonna go ahead and get uh, some sandpaper on it and take it down beyond the tooling. And uh, it'll look like it's all one uh, solid piece of walnut again. Got my four corner dowels in. So that's the box in its alignment and we'll sand it all to be the same uh, <laughs> sand it back to get all the tooling marks out of it After the first sanding, got all the tooling marks out, got the, uh, the seam well aligned with each other. All right, only gets better from here. All right, so at this time, I'm going to put a slight round over on the edge with the round over bit. Uh, same deal as the last bit, it's got a roller bearing on it, it's, but this one has a curved blade on it that's going to basically cut the corner off the edge of the box and uh, I'll bring you back when that's done and there you have it giving it that nice finished look I will come back at this with sandpaper again and just uh, clean everything all up but uh, the customer wants some personalization on top they want the silhouette of their cat and some uh, some words like the birth date and the um, expiration date and um, I need to design that on the computer still and that goes over to the laser for that work hey so I'm back after a couple days I got the uh, the laser work done on this uh, pet urn and I want to show you a little bit of what that looks like by the way I forgot to actually um, uh, film any of the the creation of that and the actual um, burning so I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the computer then I'm going to burn a test piece just to demonstrate how the laser works on that uh, particular step so right here this is called a uh, software called light burn this is the um, design that I made from the photo I was provided on on a different software and uh, I brought the SVG and this is called the SVG um, scalable vector graphic brought it in here to this software because this is a software that talks to the laser but this is what we're working with okay so this is um uh basically uh the design is going to fill in back and forth kind of like a printer but i'm going to show you that on the laser here right now so this right here is a scrap of walnut similar to the uh, material we made the urn from uh, i already did a test cut earlier but I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate what the laser does as soon as I hit start.
So that there is an example of what the process of lasering something onto a piece of wood is. Um, that actually took about, let's see, uh, 16 and three quarters minutes, so almost 17 minutes. Not bad, um, considering what it just did for me. Um, here is the box in the finished form, um, like that. Uh, so as you can see, it uh, splits in the middle and it's held in place with uh, four dowels on the corners and it's a very tight, perfect fit. Um, I put on it a product called Osmo, which is a wood wax oil finish. Uh, it goes on uh, real thin and uh, it cures over uh, about a day and you add another coat. And I think I put on, I put on three coats of this and then you buff it out with a nice soft cloth. And this is, this is the result. You can get better lighting here. Very nice darkened wood look. Um, it's a satin finish, so it's not gloss and it's not flat. And one more detail I forgot to mention is we made uh, a somewhat of a liner that uh, fits right inside the recesses of the top and the bottom. This, these are glued in, uh, so you got kind of a sleeve and uh, it fits in there, makes a nearly airtight seal. And uh, once, once this is ready to be sealed, uh, the owner will then glue the, uh, the edges together and, and uh, it'll be forever closed. Pets always hold a place near and dear in our hearts. Uh, I'm sure you can relate because it doesn't take them long before they become part of the family. Uh, and they're really only with us for a short time, whether it's three years or in this case, 20 years for this cat. Uh, it's always good to uh, memorialize them in some way. That way, you know, their memory is, is always, there's always a reminder of their memory. And it was an absolute, absolute privilege for me to uh, put this photo of um, Zaffa here uh, into this piece of walnut. This walnut is going to last the lifetime of the owner and um, I'm sure they will keep it in a prominent place on their mantle and always be able to look over here at, uh, at this memorial and think of the good times they had with their cat. 20 years, rest in peace.